Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Greg. Welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about K2 and its karmic effects on our lives. K2 is one of those planets that really um, reveals past life karmas. In one sense, it can reveal positive aspects of karma and then but you know, you got to search yourself and find out if it really does reveal negative aspects of past life karma also. With myself, it, it has. It has revealed, I, I think, both. Both a, a positive and a negative aspect. And in life, you know, a lot of those negative things seem to be the things that really teach and help a person evolve, you know. With me, that's the way it is. Negativity just really helps to push me. You know, there's that whole uh, balance thing that goes on. Too much negativity and I, it starts bothering me. And I start realizing that I, in order to get over that stuff, you know, I got to push myself to really um, turn to the positive, you know, find the strength within myself, that spiritual warrior, and overcome stuff and learn from these um, negative things. You know, you help um, unplug, or let's say you help, yeah, you help unplug those, um, what I'm trying to say is those holes in your aura. You help to uh, solidify those things. You know, you, you start bringing back that energy that you maybe gave away or those energies that caused imbalance in your aura. And you start feeling that strength. When you can really feel it in the body, you know that you're really making some progress towards your uh, spiritual evolution. And uh, one of the ways we do that is through um, these uh, karmic planets that reveal things to us. And, you know, we can help, we can learn about ourselves with them. One of them is K2. Rahu, Saturn, and the uh, the fifth house too are karmic indicators. They can really help us. And I'm talking about uh, Vedic astrology too. If you want to know where all of these uh, planets are, want to know about your fifth house, you can go to uh, greg.thunderwizard.com and purchase a uh, Thunder Astrology reading from me. And I'd be happy to tell you about all that stuff. So um, yeah, I wanted to talk about K2 and its karmic effects in each of the each of the 12 houses. Just a, like a general description of what could be something that you're experiencing in your life. You know, you got to really uh, search yourself to, to find out exactly what's going on. You know, because it can be some of the houses have different um, things that they're about. You know, they may represent spirituality and then education and children. You know, you got to really search, like um, try to figure out what what exactly is it. That's the karma that's coming to you in this life. You know, you can really look at your present life and think about that house and that subject and what is it that bothers me in this life about so-and-so, this about children. You know, what is it about them that about bothers me? You know, you get angry, you find these uh, certain angers or you find that you, you're wasting time or something. And, you know, these are coming from past life things too. You know, these are issues that we're trying to uh, learn while we're in the physical body, we're here to learn those things. So, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about that. And uh, so, yeah, let's go to uh, the first house. You know, keep in mind that I'm just uh, talking about K2 just in these houses. You know, of course, the sign that it's in, if there's any conjunctions with planets in that house, and if there's uh, aspects from other planets, it's going to really alter the way that um, it affects you. You know, if it's getting aspects from malefic planets, you know, it's going to bring some negativity. If it's getting aspected by positive planets, then you maybe you're more well on your way to overcoming the karma. You know, if it's getting aspect like uh, by uh, like Jupiter, you know, that's bringing more of a, a positive uh, spiritual reinforcement, you know, bringing wisdom to uh, where your K2 is. So, uh, yeah, K2 in the first house. First of all, first, you know, K2 is about its detachment. You know, it's completely cutting you off from that house that it sits in. It brings that detached kind of a feeling. It brings that darkness. It brings that eclipse. You know, the K2 doesn't have a head. It's just a, a headless body. There is a lot of knowledge, though, within that, that spiritual, energetic, vibrational knowledge, you know, that comes from that. There's, uh, there's deep awareness that goes on with that. There's also that malefic aspect, though. K2 is uh, like Mars in that sense. Mars, you know, when it sits in a house, it wants to accomplish that house. It wants to go in there and get in there and accomplish it. 
K2 in that sense is looking at that house that it's in and saying, I already accomplished this house. You know, I've already, I've already done this house, you know, in another life, it already, it already went in there and accomplished that house, you know, and that can mean both positive and negative. It could mean just positive. It could mean just negative, you know? So you got to really search your soul and feel those, feel those vibes, you know, see what's happening. You can really tap into this stuff though. It's there, you know, the universe wants to help us out with these things and it does. You know, with a lot of uh, meditation, with me, it's it's going deep into meditation and really looking at myself in a detached K2 kind of a way, you know, cutting my head off, but still thinking about my life. And it's that detachment, find, looking at things objectively, you know, being able to judge yourself in a real way, you know, based on the facts of your life and the things you've been through and all that. So, yeah, again, when it's in the first house... <laughs> It does. It brings uh, that detachment to your own personality. Your first house represents who you really are, the, how you really look at the world, how you think. It's based on your own personal experience of how you look at the world. And when it gets in that first house, it really um, it it cut it detaches you from your own personality, meaning that you lose your identity when you're around other people. You find your identity within other people. You take on the energy. The vibrational energy of other people really influences you a lot, especially when you're really young and you're learning about life and you're a child, you know. You have the wrong kind of malefic kind of parents, you know. They can really um, feed off of your energy, you know. I have K2 in the first house, so I could I can talk about these. Uh, this one pretty uh, from an experienced understanding of it. You know, I've been looking at my uh, my K2 and trying to understand it a lot. So that's what happens. You really lose your identity. And, um, you know, this can indicate in past lives that you were um, that kind of person that was didn't want to really know who you really are on that deep spiritual soul level. You didn't want to do that. You know, you wanted to distract yourself with other things. You know, you wanted to really um, take other people's identity. You know, you wanted to feed off of the energy of other people. You know, this is really um, what's happening right here. You know, it could mean a simple, a, a simple thing as being like an identity thief, you know, maybe not too long ago. That's what I was. I don't know. You know, well, I know some things, you know, I, I've recalled some uh, energetic memories. And uh, yeah, that's what it has to do with when it sits in that first house. It's really, um, it's issues with your identity. It's uh, maybe burying your unconscious really deep and not really wanting to know yourself. Being... Uh, really susceptible to other people's energy, you know, which can cause uh, schizophrenia, you know, it can create delusional mind, which can make somebody crazy and go do something wacko, you know, take uh, some violent um, actions towards other people. So that's what's going on with the first house. Second house, second house is dealing with um, family, family issues. Second house is all about these uh, things that the values that your family brings to you. So this can indicate, you know, you're not really um, respecting the family and what they taught you. You know, this is, this is something, somebody turning their back on their family. Um, yeah. It's also material possessions. It represents things that you value. So there can be an abuse of... Um, you know, materialistic kind of uh, kind of things. Um, you know, this can be like a thief too. But it, it really, I think it's more has to do with the family, family values, turning your back on your family. It's a, it's a house of speech too, you know, so this is, um, it can be imbalances in, you know, verbal, verbally, you know, really um, creating imbalance with the family through the, the use of words. And, you know, just getting away from them, even though maybe your family had uh, positive intentions towards you. You know, you, you just didn't want to listen. You turned your back from them and you, you, you know, you walked away from them. If it goes into the third house, this can be issues with the siblings in terms of uh, communication. Again, some kind of uh, overpowering of siblings. It's being just a house of communication, too. This can just be uh, someone who's a, like a liar, a deceitful type of a person. 
This is a house of willpower and courage. It represents the arms, you know, so this can mean, you know, somebody who's really physically abusing people. This is somebody who's overpowering other people, overpowering the siblings, you know, physically abusing them. So if we go over to the fourth house, there is a detachment that comes to the home life. There is, you know, there's that, that has to do with the emotions being cut off with the family that you live with. Some kind of um, imbalances going on there. It's also the house of the mother too, so it could represent the issues with the mother, with mother figures, you know, those um, female teachers in life. You know, it has to do with your emotions too, so this is gonna again indicate um, emotional type of problems. K2 is bringing this detachment to emotions within the fourth house. So there's something there. There's some kind of imbalance there that you want to look at. If it goes into the fifth house, fifth house also is, is about children. So, you know, it does bring that detachment to children. People who have K2 in the fifth house can really not want children in this life or they can, they can have them, but, you know, they're like, take it or leave it, you know. If I have kids, fine. If I don't, it's all good. You know, if I have them, eh, I'm not really going to do do too much uh, raising of them. You know, I'll let the spouse raise them, you know. So it could point to issues with um, with the children. You know, there can be some kind of uh, bad parenting kind of issues. It's also a house of education, academic. So, you know, there's, a um, again, imbalances of within the educational field, you know, take using your knowledge to be a deceptive person, you know, in business, ripping people off, this is a house of mantra too, so this can really mean somebody invoking spells with the power of their speech in a you know in a negative way, doing that type of stuff. It's it it does represent spiritual mastery. This house, so that can mean issues with that too, you know, being a sorcerer, that type of stuff. It's a house of romance too, bed pleasures, issues with the the relationships. You know, just, uh, you know, using people for your own physical pleasure, that kind of stuff. If it goes into the sixth house, sixth house is a house of service to other people. It's a house of healing people. So this could be mean like the um, a snake a snake oil salesman type of some, somebody, you know, selling false uh, cures for things. This is a house of enemies, too. So it could also mean... Somebody really defeating their enemies, but really taking it to an extreme. You know, not, not only defeating them, but crushing them. You know, take ending them, eliminating them, disintegrating them. You know, this is issues with uh, power, with uh, anger. You know, it's really like the, like the terrorist, you know, the, the suicide bomber. Well, not the suicide bomber. It would be uh, taking other people out, but you stay alive, but you're you're taking people out, you know. You really got some uh, revenge on your mind, and you want to get some payback. In the service field, too, that can be um, <clears throat> in terms of helping other people out, too. Instead of helping them out, you're not helping them out. You're helping them out in a negative way. If it goes into the seventh house... When it gets into the seventh house in this life, it does bring detachment to uh, having a spouse. You know, it really can make a person um, not interested in getting married. It can bring that uh, detachment to that, you know, where they, again, they could have that feeling of, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get married or not. You know, it doesn't really matter to me, you know. When it does happen, though, it can really bring a, a good, stable relationship. It'll be a kind of a detached emotionally deta detached relationship, but there'll be some, uh, it'll be a long lasting. It can bring that too. But yeah, it points to uh, issues with the uh, spouse relationships. So that's, uh, you know, some kind of imbalance with uh, the communication with, uh, you know, all that, you know, how that goes. We all know how that goes with relationships. You know, finding the, the balance there is important. Finding the, uh, when the thing reaches a karmic end in relationships is important too. You know, sometimes they're only temporary. We have some kind of uh, karmic contracts with people. 
then when we stick around too long, we start getting into those quarrels where we're fighting over meaningless stuff. And, you know, and out of that meaningless stuff comes out all kinds of stuff, you know. Turns out you're not really fighting about this meaningless stuff. It's really goes deeper than that, you know. Or then they, people forget why they're even fighting in the first place. You know, they're just, they're tired of each other, but they don't want to leave each other. You know, and then that can resort to physical violence and, you know, that kind of stuff. If it goes into the eighth house, eighth house is really a, a house of, uh, it's, it's known as a death house. It's really a house of uh, fluctuations, up and down kind of things that happen in life. One minute you're doing good in life, you're really happy, everything's all good, and then the next minute you're down and out. You know, you're, one minute you're really up with the money, you got a lot of money, everything's good, and then you're broke. You know, and then this creates that, uh, that depression. It can re cre cre create that kind of feeling of, uh, you know, hopelessness. So this is a, this could mean like someone who committed suicide. This is a house of that type of uh, death where people just can't handle what's going on and they resort to that or they fall into a depression. You know, this, this has to do with the mind. You know, that it, there's uh, imbalances there. And this could have happened in a lot of lives. Going in that eighth house, it's really the house of the unconscious too. So another issue with uh, burying the unconscious if it goes into the ninth house, ninth house is a house of spirituality. This is a pretty uh, positive place for Keta to be in. It does point to um, s uh, somebody who has mastered uh, teaching, being a teacher, being a spiritual teacher. You know, somebody that, with that placement would really have to search inside themselves to see if there is maybe an imbalance there in another life, you know. But I would say it more points to something more positive, where this was a spiritual guru in another life. But it could, it could point to, you know, in order to get to that positive aspect, they had to go through other lives where they weren't uh, necessarily a good teacher. You know, this is, uh, they were the false guru. You know, they were just keeping people hanging on to them and collecting that money or just feeding off of their energy. Stuff like that, you know. They, um, they gave them the, the poison Kool-Aid and they had everybody kill themselves, you know. They were Jim Jones, <laughs> Yeah, so it points out to that. But uh, yeah, in general, I would say it seems, seems to be more positive of a feeling that I get from uh, K2 in the ninth house. If it goes into the 10th house, this is a house of career. This is your reputation in career. So this can really make somebody like a skid row bum, you know. It can bring that detached feeling to not wanting to go out there and accomplish things, you know. This can be uh, like a beggar, someone who's out there begging. But... They're begging for money because, you know, they, they want some alcohol. They want some, they want some drugs or something, you know. So it brings that detachment to the, to the effort that you put into uh, making a career, to having that reputation, to people seeing you as a, as a hard worker, as uh, somebody dependable, somebody reliable. If it goes into the 11th house, the 11th house is about network circle. You know, it's about your friends in business, in personal life. It can bring that uh, that that lonely feeling again, like with the seventh house. It brings this uh, detachment to wanting to have lots of friends. So this can make somebody a very very isolated person in another life, somebody who was very, um, you know, just angry at the world and they had to get away. They had that they fell into that victim kind of uh, mentality, where they just thought the world was just a horrible place and they were getting away and who knows where that resulted. What happened, you know, what ended up happening with that kind of a person. But this is a, uh, so there's issues with relationships, issues with uh, trust, trusting in people. If it lands in the 12th house, K2 is seen as a really good, it's really good in the 12th house. You know, K2 is about detachment. The, the higher aspect of K2 is that detached, detachment from this life, you know, this physical life and what we desire in this life. It's all about that spiritual state of mind, that deep spiritual state of mind. It can be that that uh, state of mind that you can get into from time to time, where you're you're not even thinking. You know, you're just being in the present moment. You know, you have that enlightenment feeling. And uh, I agree with like the Thunder Wizard, where he says it's you can you can attain those states of mind here and there. You know, but you can't permanently stay in a state of um, no thoughts when you get into meditation. You know, I I can get in there here and there from time to time 
And, uh, you know, it, it comes with experience, though. The more you do it, the more you uh, can sustain that feeling of no thoughts. But once you start feeling that you're in no thoughts, you're already thinking, I'm having no thoughts, you know, so now you're thinking. So, you know, it's, it's pretty hard. But uh, with me, I, I'm gazing at candles, putting a, some incense right in front of the candles and watching that smoke just kind of gets me into a, an altered state. No lights on, just a candle, you know. So those, those states of mind are possible. But yeah, K2, when it gets in that 12th house, it really gives that uh, ability for somebody to be very psychic, really highly, deeply spiritual. The 12th house is about isolation. K2 is about isolation. And um, yeah, when, when it gets into the, to the 12th house, it is said that this is possibly like the last life that a person is gonna live on this earthly plane. You know, now how that person is evolving with that kind of K2 in the 12th house will really reveal if they really are going to have that last life. You know, are they really getting into that spiritual uh, state? You know, they're acknowledging the spirituality within us. They're acknowledging the, uh, the normal everyday consciousness within us. And they're learning how to balance those, those two uh, states, you know, the, the left and right side of the brains. You know, we got to bring them together. Bring them together and that third eye is right in the center, you know expanding and keeping that balance going on so uh yeah that's uh in general what k2 brings when it gets into all these 12 houses it's a karmic revealer and uh yeah i'd recommend everybody you know take a look at where your k2 is and check it out and try and uh, discover what you're feeling or if you don't know just uh, if you want to find out you can go to uh, greg.thunderwizard.com and uh, i can show you where your k2 is tell you what's going on see what the aspects are see how um uh what what uh sign it's in if there's any conjunctions with any other planets stuff like that and uh yeah so that's all so hope you guys have a good day night whatever take it easy peace